my son has always liked animals. When he was eight months old, he attended his first rodeo, and he has been hooked ever since. Additionally, his genetic condition, wolf hirschhorn syndrome, carries the symptom of hypersociability. So in 2012, when my little pony, Friendship is Magic came out on Netflix, it was an instant favorite for our son. And when we finished catching up on the television series, the idea of seeing his favorite characters on the big screen was very exciting for our nine-year-old boy. Needless to say, seeing his favorite ponies turned into people was not the quickest way to the cozy sections of his tiny, animal-loving heart. As someone that appreciates a good story, I was impressed, though. Let's be honest. The purpose of the My Little Pony franchise is not to tell compelling stories. It's to sell tiny plastic equine figures to children. The goal of Equestria Girls was not to tell a story that I would appreciate. It was to sell a new line of toys that could have more accessories than ponies. Human girls need clothes, they need outfits, they need jewelry. If Hasbro could make a movie that would sell the new line of toys without hiring expensive, skilled writers, they would. But they can't. So they didn't. The movie ties in well to the television series. Having just seen Twilight Sparkle gain her wings and be crowned a princess, it was nice to see her get a chance to gain her footing, so to speak. The literal change in her appearance mirrors her figurative change in position. She needs to learn how to walk, how to open doors, and how to sign her name all over again. She's the samer, and yet a whole new person all at the same time. One of the things this movie does well that a lot of kids shows fail at is pointing out how different our world is from her own. When she first lands in Canterlot High, she wants to stay on all fours and use her mouth for casual operations. It takes her time to learn how to walk, use computers, and navigate high school politics. This is why we as an audience can clearly see how unfair it is when Rainbow Dash challenges her to a game of soccer. Twilight hasn't even been walking on two feet for three days, and in order to get the help she needs she is told that she needs to beat the captain of the soccer team. Twilight doesn't back down. She faces the challenge head-on, and loses 5-0. to zero. But Rainbow Dash agrees to help anyway. There's a similar idea put forward in Star Trek several times. The Kobayashi Maru is first mentioned in Star Trek II as a training exercise where there is no way to win, and it is used as a means to test command candidates to determine how they will handle losing. They aren't told in advance that there's no solution. Telling them would remove the purpose. Then in Star Trek, The Next Generation Season 7 Episode 16, thine own self. Counselor Troy has to complete a simulation of an engineering catastrophe that can only be overcome by ordering the chief engineering officer to complete repairs in a way that will lead to his death. Telling her the right way to finish the test is against the rules for Commander Riker as he administers the test. There is a very old debate in ethics. Is it ever ethical to lie? Is it ever ethical to tell young command recruits that you are testing their tactical ability when you are in fact testing the impact of losing on their ego? Is it ever ethical to tell command candidates that you are testing their knowledge of engineering when you are in fact testing their resolve to sacrifice one officer to save the crew? Is it ever ethical to tell someone asking for your loyalty that they need to beat you at a game they have no hope of winning? when in fact you are testing their resolve to follow through despite the odds? Is it ethical to tell a murderer that his quarry is not in your house even after inviting him in? Some ethicists say that these things are wrong no matter what. A lie is a lie is a lie, they say. And yet, in each of these cases, I can't think of another way to run the test. If you tell new command recruits that you're testing how they handle unexpected defeat, then it's no longer unexpected. If it tell bridge crew candidates that you're asking them to sacrifice an officer, then that's all they'll do. If you tell a new friend that you're trying to test her resolve, then she'll just show resolve anyway. This is one thing that I've noticed about ethics that makes it different from other sciences. 
Despite the best efforts of utilitarian thinkers, reducing ethics to mathematical equations like we've done with physics and chemistry has been a failed experiment. While measurement and math seem to be the language of the physical world, poetry and pity seem to be the language of ethics. This means we may never have an equation of ethics, and that leaves some people afraid that we will never have a concrete answer as to